Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Feeling Shredder. Thank you so much for joining the channel. This video is going to be all about how I got accepted to the show Hyperdrive and also what I had to do to prepare my car. But first I want to say thank you all so much for all the support, all the love I've been getting. I've been getting a ton of orders for shirts and stickers on my website. Super cool. You guys are the best. I really appreciate the support. Those orders will be going out as soon as possible. Uh, this is another shirt that I haven't really put anywhere for sale. I didn't know if it would sell. But you guys let me know what you think about it. It's just a little different color scheme, a little bit different layout. And uh, I was also thinking, why not be able to really give you a piece of me? Instead of just a shirt or a sticker, why not a piece of my car, right? You guys saw that my car got very properly destroyed on the show. And I've got lots of pieces of her left. <laughs> Smashed bits of the fiberglass bumpers and fenders and other little bits. So I was just curious. If any of you would want a piece of that to hang on the wall as a little plaque or a little memento, I could sign it for you, I could write a little message for you, I could put it on a plaque, whatever, I don't know. I have no idea if this would be something of interest, but if it would, let me know down in the comments and if it's something that we have enough interest for, then I can put together the effort to make plaques and whatever else and get you a piece of my car. And then you can really have a piece of hyperdrive history. All right, let's get started with the video. What you wanna know is how did I get accepted and what did I do to make my car ready for the hyperdrive course? So that is what this video is all about. I'm gonna talk about the interview process and the application process. And then once I get through that bit, I will talk about what it took to get my car prepared and you know the, the steps I had to go through and the things I had to do. So let's jump right into it. Basically, the whole process started with a very simple ad on Facebook that I saw that said, driver wanted for TV show. It was so bland and basic that I think everyone applied. Um, who wouldn't want to try and be on a TV show, right? So I submitted my application. It just was very simple. It was your name, your age, a little bit about you, some bio stuff, your location, and a couple of photos of you and your car. So I did that. And then I followed up a couple months later because I hadn't heard anything. And I finally got an email back from Jackie or Jax. And she was just like, hey, you know, we've got tens of thousands of applicants we're weeding through. Just stay tuned and we'll let you know. So a couple more months went by and I reached out to her again. I said, hey, you know, still interested in the project. Are you guys still doing it? What's going on? Back and forth, back and forth about every two months for almost a year until they had whittled it down to where they started to really kind of look for the candidates that they wanted. So they then asked me for a Skype interview. So I had to do a Skype interview. That went well. Another couple months go by, nothing, hadn't heard anything. Reached out again. Okay, now they want a more in-depth application with many more photos and more information about me and my car and my backstory. So I you know, answered all those questions that I could and continued to follow up because frankly, I think they were just you know, swimming in a tens of thousands of people or, or thousands of people that they had to sort through to figure out who would be the best for the show. That went through and then maybe about six months before we were supposed to start shooting, they said, okay, uh, you are with, you know, now have made the cut to the next step and we want you to do a doctor's visit. You have to go get a physical, you have to pay for it on your own dime and then you have to submit that information. We wanna make sure that you're healthy enough for TV and for doing these kind of driving maneuvers that we're looking for. So sure enough, I did. I went and paid 150 bucks, got checked out by a doctor I think that was a nice qualifier to let the show production team know that, hey, we want to make sure we have people that are serious, that are really interested, that are hungry to be on something like this, and that aren't willing to, or that are willing to pay, you know, a couple hundred bucks to go to get checked out. So, did that, okay, passed through that. Then up next was the background check. So same thing, had to submit all my information. Now they have all my legal info. They, you know, went through the background check process. This happened with all the competitors on the show as well as the spotters. So. You know, that, that took another several people out of the mix, I'm sure. And now they've got it whittled down to several hundred people. And, you know, the show is quickly approaching and they're, they're sorting out all the details. Well, now they start asking these qualifying questions. So these questions were, <laughs> they, they started kind of simple. They started as, you know, hey, are you willing to take off work for three weeks? Yeah, absolutely. Regardless of what that takes, whether I have to quit my job or what. I'm willing to take off work. Okay. And then, you know, some people said, no, I can't do that. So then they whittled it down a little bit more. Now you have several hundred people. Okay. The next question is, are you willing to do this project with no pay? 
And that was a big one, I think, for a lot of people. I think several people were like, you know, I already have these sponsors or these events or these, you know, obligations to go to. And I can't give that up for no income and no lost wages compensation. So I'm out. So then they have even fewer people. And I said, yeah, let's do it. I'll do it for nothing. Sure. And then they ask an even more important qualifying question, which is, are you willing to do this without any liability or coverage from our team for your car? So that means I'm responsible for all damage on my own vehicle, which I you know, don't want to have happen, of course. But I said, OK, sure. And at this point, you know, I'm starting to ask them questions about the course. What kind of obstacles or stunts are we going to have to be doing? When is it? Where is it? And this is a big drawback for, I think, quite a few people that were applying for the show is they didn't tell us anything. It was so just blind faith. I mean, they didn't tell us anything. They said there will be some stunts. You will need to be able to slide your car through some corners. Um, your car needs to be as reliable as you can. But they were just kind of like, yeah, just don't worry about it. Your car is fine, even though they don't really know a lot about cars, to be quite honest. And they really didn't know what kind of modifications I had done to my car. So they had no idea what my car is capable of or not capable of. They just wanted to make sure they had a, someone to you know, get in that driver's seat and put on a great show. So I, I actually you know, was not taking no for an answer. And I started really inquiring some of the other people on the show uh, about what I could figure out to try and have the best chance of you know, preparing my car. Because I've done all kinds of driving, but mostly drifting in my car. And let's say I was preparing for a rally race. Well, I would do quite a few things to get my car ready for a rally. If I was preparing for a drag race, then complete opposite. You know, I would change the suspension. I would change to a big tire. I would put much beefier axles on. If I was doing rally stuff, I would raise the car. I would put knobby dirt tires. And, you know, I'd make sure the interior was sealed and that I had a uh, proper windshield wiper and stuff in case I went through any dust or mud. And just different types of motorsports, you know, require different types of preparation. Of course, that's why we have different kinds of race cars all around the world. So they weren't telling us anything. So I finally got a hold of the stunt coordinator, ACP, and I was really grilling him about what he could tell me. And he basically couldn't tell me anything. He just said, OK, look, you know, your car will need to be, going, be able to go off some small jumps. He called them trench plate jumps. They're apparently, you know, anywhere between three and 10 inches is what they were saying. So a 10 inch jump for my car would absolutely destroy it. A three inch jump, not a big deal. And somewhere in between there may or may not have a impact on the vehicle's suspension and performance and reliability. So I just said, OK, what else can you tell me? He said, well, there's going to be a grind rail. He wouldn't tell me much more than that. And, but I'm thinking, you know, OK, in my head, you can only go through a grind rail one or two ways. It'll either be straight or sideways. If it's sideways, I need to protect the drive shaft, especially because it hangs a little lower than the frame rails. The exhaust I can move and tuck up. Um, the side skirts and stuff are going to get just blown apart. And any other fuel lines and brake lines I would need to make sure are protected. If we go forwards through it, which I still didn't know which direction, then it, you know the, the rails are going to rub on things like control arms and steering components and possibly frame parts and you know subframe and, and frame rails and so forth. And so that I was like, well, I don't really know where I would brace or you know how wide are the rails. Um, what part of this, you know, what's the grade of the rail? Um, how am I going to come onto the rail and come off the rail? Things like that were just completely unknown and they wouldn't tell me. I don't know if they even knew themselves at this point, but I think that was part of it is that they just wouldn't tell me um, because they wanted, you know, it to be a big surprise for all the competitors. They didn't want anyone to have a really unfair advantage, especially since several of the driver's cars were being shipped from overseas. You know, they brought in two cars from Brazil. I'm sure those took a couple extra months to get in compared to bringing my car from Texas. Uh, the French cars were shipped several months in advance, same with the German cars. And the Japanese cars were shipped, I think, upwards of five or six months in advance because it takes a lot longer to get them over here. Of course, they have to clear customs and everything. And since it's such a big production, time is money. So they had to make sure that nothing got hung up and that everything got here on time and so forth. So. You know, they weren't telling me a whole lot about it. They eventually, you know, within about, I'd say 30 days of the production start, they gave me this really crappy drawing. And I've tried to get my hands on it to give to you guys to let you see it, but they will not let me show any of this. It's part of my contract. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm just going to draw it on some paper. I'm going to trace it and then hopefully that suffices and I don't get too much trouble. But I'll show you. It was the crappiest drawing you've ever seen. It was just like on a napkin of a car, like jumping off a shipping container onto a grind rail. And I'm just like, this is not real. Like there's no way that we're going to do this. And if we do, every car is getting destroyed immediately. You won't have a single one cross the finish. And so I said that to the production team and they were like, yeah, you know, these are just an artist rendition. Uh, this is some elements that might be on the show. So they were keeping it very vague, super just in the dark. And again, I think for a lot of people that were on the fence about this show, it seemed like a scam to some people. They were like, that's, that's not real. There's no way. Uh, other people were like, they just want to destroy our cars and not pay for it. So I'm not doing it. Uh, or other reasons that, you know, you, you decide what you think would, would come from that. You know, they're not telling me anything. It's no pay. They were trying to ship my car halfway across the country slash halfway across the world. They're being extremely secretive. You know, I, in my back of my head, I was thinking, man, is this like some crime ring to round up all the coolest drift cars in the country and ship them to Russia or something where we would never see them again? That would absolutely break my heart forever and, and ruin my life. So it, <laughs> there was a lot of things going through my head, but more than all of that was that I really wanted to become a part of this project that I truly believe deep down inside would be something incredible. So I said, okay, yep, whatever, whatever the question was, I basically went for the velocity of yes man. You might have seen that movie. But I just said yes to everything. Whatever they asked, I was game for. Uh, if it's going off jumps, if it's destroying my car, if it's taking no pay, quitting my job, traveling across the country. And, you know, part of the contract even said that we can edit you out completely. And, you know, that was a big thing too. Like you might go and do all of this and then you might make it in the show for 30 seconds or a minute, or they might cut you completely. They just so they also have the ability to make you whatever they want. So they can make me the villain, they can make me the hero, they can make me the jerk, they can make me, you know, whatever they want. They, can, they have the ability to do that. And with the editing process, you're able to really portray someone in whatever kind of light that you want. So. That was another thing I had to agree to. I had to say, yeah, okay, I'll, you can make me whatever you want. And that's what they got to do. So, for example, Omar, who's a great guy in person, honestly, I love the guy, he's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's got some qualities that some people might feel like it rubs them the wrong way, but in the show, he came off like a complete D-bag. And I think that was really funny for us because we know Omar personally and, and he's a great guy. Because of that, you know, he had to agree to the same things that we all agreed to. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here. So going up to the show, uh, about 30 days out, I still was uh, labeled as an alternate. So Jackie told me, she was like, yo, you're going to be a maybe, and that's the best I can give you. And I'm like, well, it's going to take me quite a bit of time and money to prep my car, and I'm willing to do it, but I need to know that I'm on the show or not. You know, I'm not willing to completely change my car setup, spend all this time and money and effort getting my car ready for something that maybe doesn't even happen. And she said, look, man, I, that's all I can tell you. And you either can go for it or not. You know, it's up to you. So I just had some faith in my heart and I was like, you know what? This is going to happen. This is absolutely going to happen. I put it out there. This is what I want to happen. I'm dying for this to be something that I'm a part of. So I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm just going on blind faith, even though I'm an alternate. So this is about T minus 30 days. So I'm letting Everyone around me know, hey, yo, you know, my work especially, hey, I got to quit work and prep my car for this thing that I might do. And they're like, you might do? What, what do you mean you might do? I'm just like, that's, that's it. It's a maybe. So I'm going to try for it. I'm going to go for it as best I can. And, you know, whatever comes of it is going to come of it, but I got to try. So they said, okay, if that's what you want to do. Go for it. So basically quit my job, kind of a leave of absence, if you will. And then I decided to you know, prep my car as best I could. Well, my shop is not really capable of doing all the types of modifications that I want to do. I needed some more fab tools. And luckily, I had made friends with the guys from Arclight Fab up in Dallas through the Rally Ranch. So I got to teach them. You may have seen me on Discovery Channel. I'm having a very small part where I got to count down from three. And uh, sending Aaron Kaufman and the boys on their first rally. Well, I made friends with them and Aaron was very kind and said, yo, just come and use my shop. Whatever you need to use, my shop is at your disposal. I want to see you do great things on the show. Let's go for it, man. And so I did. So I packed up my trailer, packed up all my tools and all my spare parts, and I split. And I went from Austin to Dallas, 
and I was just sleeping on friends' couches. Thank you, Ethan, and everyone else who let me sleep on your couch. And I stayed there for nearly a month modifying my car and prepping it. And I was getting everything ready for what I thought would be an ideal upgrade, right? So for the grind rail, I decided to weld some metal plates, this is a 3 16 steel plate, to the bottom of my lower control arms in the rear. And I also braced the little subframe plate. It looks like an L like this. And I just braced it with some more plate so that I'm thinking when I'm going off this rail, it's something to slide on and something to protect the suspension and everything from getting damaged. My front lower control arms are tubular already, but they have a square kind of metal plate with a what's called a steering stop, which is just simply shims that you stack up in order to make the steering wheel stop at a certain angle. Well, it sticks down, so I cut that off. I turned all the bolt hardware upside down so that nothing was sticking down and instead it was pointing up. So basically everything was as smooth as possible underneath the bottom of the car. I also built a little tunnel for the fuel lines and the brake lines because I wanted to make sure that those were protected, of course. Now, the suspension got a big overhaul. The guys at BC Racing hooked me up with some coilovers. I, same thing, I just told you, I gave them the most basic information of, hey, I need to go off jumps in my car. Uh, that's all I know, help me out. <laughs> and so they put their heads together, they got me the right spring grate. They ran me on an 8K front and a 6K rear for you car nerds that are wondering. And I'm running the long travel two-way adjustable ER setup. So I've got helper springs front and rear. I've got the longest travel shock body and I've got a kind of a softer spring rate. And then I was able to independently adjust compression and rebound for the jumps. So I've never really gone off a jump in my car. So it was all new to me, but I put that suspension on. I set the ride height. I know that my car was extra tall for the show. I'm sorry for all you drift nerds that love a low car. I love a low car myself, but the performance needed that ride height. So I had to just gut it out and jack it up and that's that, sorry. <laughs> Um, other things I did were the modifications to the exterior, so basically just kind of make it look as good as I can. This is going to be, you know, big TV time and I'm trying to make it look good, so I got a new body kit from 2F Performance. And the show initially told me that I, they were going to paint the car or wrap the car for me. And they might get mad at me for telling you this, but basically I got kind of boned on that deal because I was supposed to have the car painted and wrapped by them and T minus five days before I left, they told me, um, oh yeah, you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. So I was forced to undergo the expense and the hassle of not only preparing my car for all these you know, obstacles that I don't know anything about, but also make sure that it looks as good as I can. So I did, I just buckled down. I got the, the rest of the modifications I could done. I, I replaced the clutch, I did an oil change, you know, nut and bolted everything. I put different suspension on in terms of the steering. So normally I would use uh, what's called a bolt-on uh, drift knuckle. So that gives you a lot of steering angle left to right, but it is an extra piece to break. So instead I removed that and I just put what's called a cut knuckle, which is simply an OEM steering arm. And it's just been modified slightly, but it's much stronger than a bolt-on piece. Same with all my suspension arms, the guys at SPL Parts, you know, I told them what I was going to do and they said, yo, we got you. We got the strongest arms in the business. Put them on your car. I want to see great things. So that was really nice of them to sponsor me on that. And that's what I did. I put all the, the beefiest stuff I could on my car. It certainly increased the weight of everything quite a bit, but that was the sacrifice I made for the performance and the potential longevity and reliability of going off whatever the heck I was going off. So I ended up painting the car in a driveway of a friend of mine's house. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Jordan, for the hookup on that. We sprayed it in his driveway. It was a couple of us that came together and just bought the paint and made it happen. I had a mobile guy with a little portable air compressor and paint gun come and help me out. And it was kind of a disaster, but you know, it, it got the job done as good as it could for what the kind of time frame I had left and the little budget I had, which is basically nothing. And then the last little bits were the stickers and stuff. My good friend Kegel Johnson, thank you so much for helping me. We stayed up for 24 straight hours handling every single piece of vinyl on my car that you saw. All the chrome reflective red and pink um, and reflective white that you saw was all literally hand laid one piece at a time. I didn't do a full mock-up with transfer tape or anything like that. It was just one at a time. Each shard you saw was hand laid on and we would kind of stand back and like, okay, I think that looks good. And that was another thing, you know, the sponsor logos 
was a big deal. They really wanted no logos on the cars. Netflix is, takes a lot of pride in not having commercials. So same thing, they don't do any in, in <clears throat> what do they call that? In show advertising, I guess they call it. But basically you'll never see a subliminal ad for like Coca-Cola or you know, you'll never see someone drinking a can with a label out. You won't see any blatant you know, branding on anyone's clothing or anything throughout any of their shows, which is really pretty cool, honestly, because who loves commercials? No one. But um, for us, you know, for drivers, I think it's really important to be able to represent the brands that have been supporting you for many, many years. And me, as well as all the other drivers, told them, yo, we've got to keep our sponsors, uh, at least our main ones, you've got to let us represent them on the, the car for the show. This is just impossible to take them all off. You know, some of them I, I literally have a contract for that says for the entire year I have to have this displayed on the, the car. And so that was kind of another thing to jump through. And in the end, they were very strict. We were only allowed one logo from eight companies. We were only allowed to display it on one or, or the other side, not both. And we were only allowed to put it in certain places that they specified. So you'll see the logos look a little funny on some of the cars. That's just simply because of how strictly regulated that was. But I was able to put on, you know, all the, the main sponsors that I could, all the people that really helped me out to get here. And that was really important that I was able to do that, you know, so, so that was a big help for sure. And then, you know, getting the car finally prepped, I, I won't drag this on too long. I know it's already been a few minutes, but basically getting all that done, I still didn't know I was going to be on the show until eight days before I had to leave. So all the suspension upgrades I did happened before that. All of the chassis upgrades I did happened before that. It wasn't until, you know, about, about eight days, or it, right at eight days. I remember distinctly because I'm like, you want me to paint my car? and put vinyl on in eight days, plus finish the rest of the preparation that I have, like that's absolutely impossible. I was already under the gun to make it there on time without having to paint my car, and now I do. So anyway, got it together, got it done, and then Kegel and I were so tired, I took a, a quick nap, and then we had to split and drive straight to New York from Dallas, which is about a 35 hour drive with stops. Uh, just stops for fuel, not stops for sleeping. So. We did it. Kegel was like, yo, man, I'll, I'll help you out. Uh, you fly me home and then I'll help you drive. And I said, OK, deal. So I looked up flights online. I found one for two hundred and thirty dollars. I figured, OK, that's cheap insurance to make sure I make it there on time. I'll spend the money and let's get it done. So bottom of the ticket and we blast off to New York. We're driving. We're taking turns every three or four hours. We would swap and, you know, we get all the way there pretty much great, you know, no problems. It was, you know, a pain in the butt, but we made it happen. Drove straight through and I got us a hotel for the night right before we had to be there the next day. And then his plan was just to wake up early, take the shuttle to the airport and fly home. So he did. And I get a call at about six o'clock in the morning and I'm just like, yo, what's up? It's Kegel. And he's like, hey, uh, yeah, you bought a ticket for next Thursday. And I'm just like, no, you know, that was like all the money I have left. And he's like, yeah, uh, so what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I have to fly you home. How much is it to buy you a ticket right now? It was another $550. So it cost me nearly 800 bucks to have Kegel help me drive and then fly him back. And uh, of course, the other ticket is non-refundable and they wouldn't apply that towards it. So that was very painful. So yeah, that sucked. Anyway, Went on from there and <laughs> went and showed up and we finally made it and I, I got to drag race my good friends Brittany and Kevin and you might have seen that from their little intro. They did a, a whole behind the scenes video. I encourage you to check it out. Their channel is awesome as well on YouTube and they've done a lot of stuff and I'll link that down in the description below. But basically, you know, final little bits of showing up and that's where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I really appreciate you all following along with my journey here. Hopefully I can keep continuing to keep this interesting and you guys are watching it and loving it and giving me the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe please and share this show. And uh, this shirt right here, I wanna know what you think about it. You know, I only made one of these. This is the only one in existence. Actually, I guess I made two. I made one for me and one for my girlfriend. But um, it's got the seven in my little Shredder Racing logo. And then the same thing on the back. So if this is something that you think you would want to purchase or have, have on your back, then let me know. Or any other kind of design cues, if it's different color shirts or different 
materials or whatever, you guys let me know and I'll be happy to make that happen so you can continue to show your love. All right, see you on the next one.